Welcome to UGC E Pathshala PG Learning in Food Science. I am Dr. Maria Margaret Joseph, Associate Professor, Department of Home Science, Women's Christian College. In this module, we will study the different factors to be considered in selection of fish. When you select a good fresh fish, you can be sure that your dishes that you are going to make from the fish would be tasty as well as nutritious. Uh, also we will study different recipes that could possibly be made from the fish that you select and buy. So uh, first let's uh, have a look at the various factors to be considered in verifying the quality of good fish. First point, you will have to check the eyes for clarity. Before you handle the fish, check the eyes. They should be crystal clear, plump, wet and shiny with no sunken features. If the eyes look good, you can bet with reasonable confidence that the fish is fresh and healthy. Secondly, you can check the fins on a fish. The tail and the dorsal fins of the fish should be healthy, looking wet and intact. There should not be any damage or should not be broken in any way. A fish that's been mishandled will have torn or ragged fins, while an older fish's fins will be dry and brittle. Thirdly, you can poke the fish. If the fish, if the fish seller or the fishermonger allows it, try touching the fish for further signs of health and freshness. You should lightly press the body of the fish. It should feel cold, wet and slippery, but not sticky. When pressed, it should spring back to its natural shape, just like if you were to press on your own flesh. If it doesn't spring back, it is a sure sign that the meat has softened and that there is no longer worthy of the money that you are going to buy for it and that it is spoiled. Next you can check the gills. Check the gills for vitality and color. When the first when first caught, a fish gills appear bright red in color and slowly darken over a period of time. The brighter the color, the fresher the fish. The gills should also feel clean and cold, not slimy. Next, you can touch the scales. If it's a scaly fish, then on the surface of the skin, you will find the scales. And the scales are designed to protect the fish from a harsh, watery environment. When a fish is fresh, the scales will be shiny and firm. A, ver a veritable armor against the elements, that is the water in which it is surviving in, it forms like an armor for the fish. Less fresh fish will often shed scales as you run your hand over the surface of the skin and it may appear dry or flaky. Inspect the color and consistency of the fish. Look for cracks in the fillet and run between the muscles, uh, run your fingers between the muscles and collagen sheaths, the white lines running through the fish along the muscle layer. Breaks in the muscle itself tend to indicate mishandling. Natural separation of the muscles along the collagen sheets indicate that the fish is not very fresh because enzymes naturally present in the muscle tissue are degrading and the collagen is being deteriorating causing the muscle to start to tear under their own weight. Pooling water inside the container Okay, so when you place a fish inside the container, if there's a lot of water coming outside the fish, it indicates that the fish is aging and losing its ability to hold the moisture content of the fish. So that's a bad sign. Selecting the part of the fish. Now we don't generally eat the entire part of the fish. There are certain parts which are not edible. So how do you select that? In terms of edible parts, 
the body of a fish is quite simple compared to a mammal there are some there aren't a lot of parts to choose from but there are some significant differences between them the most important thing to consider is what you will be doing with the meat certain cuts are better than others for cooking serving raw or boiling into a stew here are some tips for choosing wisely depending on the dish you want to prepare you will choose the different cuts of the fish either you want to just piece it along with the head and the tail or you want only the body of the fish as a fillet depending on the recipe you choose and you can butcher the fish the tail meat is generally tougher but cheaper than fish fillet fillet is a tender belly part of the fish that's because the muscles in this region that is the tail region do the most work in life so they are really used much in the fish okay the tail part this cut is greater is a great for tartar because the meat is tenderized by the chopping and then often further tenderized with salt vinegar and oil when it is dressed the belly of the fish is the most expensive part of the fish and also the fattiest for an oily tender fish like tuna the belly is delicious when it is served raw or braised braising is a method of cooking where you add a little oil and you you know simmer the fish in that fry it a little and then it's some liquid is added and it's allowed to cook in that for some time the fillet the fillet is a lean beautiful tasty and extremely versatile part of the fish fillets will dry out quickly if overcooked however if you treat them with care you can really savor the flavor and serve a very tasty dish the color of the fish we like to compare the color of the fish to a pork shoulder they are great for braising and slow roasting actually the main flavor of a fish can be contained if we you know give it a slow cooking in the natural fluids so that the flavor is maintained and it is just done not undercooked or overcooked the downside is that there are only two per fish and they don't yield a lot of meat so it can be expensive to make a meal out of collars they are also difficult to find in normal grocery stores let us move on to the different type of uh, recipes which uh, we can lend a fish to be made into commonly if you see you can make a healthy recipes like baked fish or uh, just uh, lightly boiling the fish and tossing it in a salad or you can use it for um, dishes like uh, a puttu where you can lightly boil it and then blend it with suitable seasonings or you can use it in a curry form which is generally what we do in the south indian uh, cuisine uh, you can also shallow fry or deep fry it depending on the method and the dish that you're going to make even fish cutlets could be made make a dish such as mean polichattu which is baked fish with indian spices it's a traditional dish of kerala most often prepared with a popular curry mean the english word is a peel spot an extremely delicious and bony freshwater fish for this recipe we can just have a look at the ingredients and then we'll go on to the method of preparation initially you marinate and fry the fish the whole fish or any medium sized fish um, the scale and the guts are removed and cleaned and then you have to apply about half teaspoon of turmeric powder 1 teaspoon of red chili powder salt half a teaspoon then you need oil a quarter cup for shallow frying the fish for the masala 
you take another two tablespoons of oil and uh, which you can use the oil which you've left for left over from the shallow frying you can add mustard seeds quarter teaspoon curry leaves a few onion one large finely chopped and then you can add ginger one tablespoon grated or finely chopped garlic three to four cloves crushed and finely chopped green chilies two chopped tomatoes two chopped turmeric powder quarter teaspoon red chili powder half to one teaspoon as per the you know the degree of uh, chili that you require garam masala powder half teaspoon and salt to taste water about quarter cup or so lime juice from half a lime you can use together and a uh, few coriander leaves or a cilantro leaves now the method which we are going to follow you make a paste to marinate the fish initially and rub it li liberally over the fish on all the sides then you can refrigerate it for at least half an hour next you heat oil in a pan and shallow fry the fish till it is lightly browned on both sides remove onto a paper towel a uh, lined plate and you keep it aside for the extra oil to drain now you discard the oil in the pan keeping around 2 tablespoons of oil for the masala add mustard seed curry leaves and when they crackle add the onions and saute till they are lightly golden brown now you can add the chopped ginger and garlic green chilies and saute till you get a good aroma then add the tomatoes and cook till they turn a little mushy and can be easily broken with a spoon add all the masala powders that i mentioned and saute for a few minutes season it with the required amount of salt add water lime juice and the cilantro leaves cover and cook the masala for a few minutes open the lid and cook the masala till no longer very runny it should be a little thick meanwhile preheat the oven to 400 degrees fahrenheit and tear off two large pieces of foil for baking the fish to assemble place some of the cooked masala in the center of the foil place the fish on top and spread some more masala over it arrange a few lime slices around it for a good presentation if needed tightly cover the fish with the foil and pinch the edges closed to create a sealed parcel repeat with the other fish place the fish parcels in a baking tray and bake for 25 to 30 minutes remove the parcels from the oven and open carefully as it will be hot to serve spoon the fish and masala onto a plate and serve hot with steamed rice lime wedges and a few slices of fresh red onion the next dish we are going to see for today is a classic madras fish curry the ingredients for marinating are uh, if you take half kg of fish 2 teaspoons of chili powder 1 teaspoon turmeric powder and a teaspoon of salt for the masala you can heat uh, you can take oil half a cup mustard seeds 1 teaspoon fenugreek seeds quarter teaspoon dry red chilies 2 curry leaves a few onions 2 large chopped finely tomatoes 3 large chopped finely green chilies 2 chili powder 1 tablespoon kashmiri chili powder to add extra color 3 tablespoons coriander powder 2 tablespoons turmeric another 2 teaspoons and tamarind pulp one small gooseberry size ball which we can make into a pulp salt to taste curry leaves 2 sprigs and a few coriander leaves for garnish can be finely chopped and add water as needed the procedure take the fish and the marinating spices and mix it well set aside 
Soak tamarind in some water, squeeze them well and strain and set aside. Heat an earthenware pot. Now regularly, traditionally if we make this curry in an earthenware pot to enhance the flavour, that is how it's generally made in the traditional way. So heat an earthenware pot, add in the oil and crackle the mustard. Add the fenugreek, dry chilies and the curry leaves. This is seasoning as you all know. Add in onions and the green chilies, salt and mix well. Cook till it gets slightly translucent. Add in the tomatoes and cook till it gets a little mushy. And in the spice, add the spice powders as well. And a splash of water and mix it well and cook, fry it till the oil separates so that all the raw taste is removed. Now you can add the tamarind pulp and salt and more water is needed and bring this gravy to a boil. Now add in the fish and mix well, bring this to a boil again and do not forget to simmer it for 10 to 15 minutes. Now you can add fresh curry leaves and coriander leaves, mix well and serve over hot rice. Now we'll go on to making a grilled fish. So baking and grilling are two uh, good methods of uh, cooking fish where you're using less of oil and bringing, in, bringing out more of the flavor of the fish okay, when compared to deep frying where you use a lot of oil and therefore add extra calories to the diet. Now this is called as grilled tilapia piccata recipe. Sounds very different but it's very simple to do. Half teaspoon of grated lemon peel, three tablespoons lemon juice, two tablespoons of olive oil, two garlic cloves finely minced, two teaspoons of capers drained, three tablespoon minced fresh basil, four tilapia fillet. So fillet is the body of the fish after removing the bones. Half teaspoon of salt and quarter teaspoon of pepper. Now the directions how to make it is as follows. In a small bowl, whisk a lemon peel lemon juice, oil and garlic until they are well blended. Stir in the capers and two tablespoons of basil. Keep two tablespoons mixture for drizzling the cooked fish. Brush the remaining mixture onto both sides of the tilapia. Sprinkle with salt and pepper. On a lightly oiled grill rack, grill the tilapia covered over medium to high uh, heat or broil it for uh, four minutes okay and on each side you have to do it until the fish just begins to flake easily with a fork so when the flesh comes out easily when you fork it it shows that it is cooked drizzle the reverse uh, the reserved lemon you've kept a little lemon juice aside earlier that you can put over the cooked fish sprinkle the remaining basil and this gives you four servings of grilled fish. The next interesting recipe is the Chetinad fish fry recipe. This is a very delicious spicy recipe from the Chetinad region and goes well with rice and curry. So in this recipe you will need a few ingredients. First is a four fish uh, steaks which are thinly sliced, oil for shallow frying. For the marinade take half teaspoon of red chili powder quarter teaspoon black pepper powder, quarter teaspoon of turmeric powder, one teaspoon of garam masala powder, one tablespoon of shallots or the pearl onions or the sambar vangayam what we say and ground, you have to grind all of this to a very fine paste. Quarter or half teaspoon of freshly chopped ginger garlic paste can also be used and adequate amount of salt to taste. Clean the fish steaks and let the excess water drain from it. You can also use a kitchen hand towel to remove the extra water. In a bowl mix all the ingredients to prepare the marinade. The marinade should be a thick paste so that the moisture from the shallots and the ginger garlic should be enough but if it is not you can add a few drops of water. Coat 
the fish pieces generously on all sides with the fish fry marinade. Let it marinate in the fridge covered for at least half an hour or you can allow it to be there for overnight. When ready to fry, heat enough oil to shallow fry the fish. Gently drop each fish piece into the hot oil and keep the heat medium to high. Fry both the sides until dark brown and the fish is cooked through. You can check your notes for a few other tips to be followed. But generally this could be served hot with the raw onions and lemon wedges. The next salad we are going to look at is a tuna salad. Generally we do not have much of fish salad in our dietary but nowadays with the lack of time and being health conscious we have to include such recipes to make life more healthy and easy cooking. So here you can take tuna, you can use a canned tuna, one cup, white bread slices, four, garlic cloves, six, olive oil, one teaspoon or one tablespoon, cherry tomatoes, 10 to 12, iceberg lettuce leaves, five to six, rocket leaves, five to six, black olives and green olives, pitted with the seed removed, five to six numbers each, capers four to five, can add adequate salt to taste, crushed black pepper corns a few, paprika powder one teaspoon, honey one and a half teaspoon, juice of half a lemon and a fresh parsley two to three sprigs. Lemon wedges can be used for serving. Now to make the salad, toast the bread slices lightly Slice garlic thinly and you can keep it for later use. Heat one teaspoon of olive oil in a non-stick pan. Add sliced garlic and fry lightly brown. Transfer the fried garlic in a bowl and set aside. Reserve the oil. The extra oil can be kept for use later. To make the salad, put the cherry tomatoes in halves and place in another bowl. Just you can tear the lettuce leaves and the rocket leaves and add it. Reheat the unused oil and add the tuna. Stir or saute the fish in the oil for a minute. Switch off the heat and allow it to cool. The green and the black olives can be added to the salad after putting it in quarter pieces. The capers can be made into half pieces and added. To make the dressing, you have to combine olive oil, soil, uh, salt, crushed peppercorns, paprika powder, honey and fresh lemon juice. Make it into a mixture, mix it well and rub the toasted bread slices with the pieces of garlic which you have left aside which and cut this bread into small cubes which are called as croutons. Add this crouton also to the salad. Add the sauteed tuna to the salad along with the salt and crushed peppercorns and toss it well. Add the dressing and toss it once again. Add fried garlic and the torn parsley leaves and mix it again. This can be served garnished with lemon wedges. So you can see you have a good nutritious meal with hardly much work put into it. You have vegetables, fresh vegetables, fresh seasonings, fresh garlic, lemon and uh, cilantro leaves which are very good in B vitamins and vitamin C. You have your good protein source, the tuna fish, which you've lightly fried or cooked and added and very precious, nutritious olive oil, high in mono and polyunsaturated fatty acids. It's quite, uh, you know, complete and nutritious dish which gives a variety in the menu. You'll have a lot of crunchiness from the leaves that you've added. The next important uh, dish which we could make is a fish putto. Generally use a particular fish for this. The shark fish or the sora fish is uh, you know the best fish to be used for this as it gives a good taste and flavor to the dish. So you can take half a kilo of shark fillet that is a fish without the bone, one onion largely uh, large onion finely chopped garlic one pot which is 10 to 15 cloves of finely chopped garlic green chilies three to four finely chopped turmeric powder half a teaspoon 
red chilli powder half a teaspoon pepper powder 1 to 1 and a half teaspoon depending on the amount of uh, pungency you want in the diet and salt to taste for the seasoning you can add 2 to 3 tablespoons of oil 1 teaspoon of fennel seeds and 1 or 2 sprigs of curry leaves the procedure to be followed in making this is also simple first you clean the fish by applying turmeric powder wash it in water to get rid of any extra smell of the fish keep it aside heat water in a pan and when it starts to boil add the fish with a little salt allow it to cook once it is done drain the water and allow it to cool remove all the excess water completely from the fish and scramble it using your hands just break it up into small pieces add the turmeric powder red chili powder pepper powder and salt to the scrambled fish and mix it well keep it aside heat oil in a pan season with fennel seeds and curry leaves once it is the uh, fennel seeds and crackles you can add the chopped garlic and saute once the color starts to change Add the finely chopped onions, fry till the onions become slight brown in color. After that, you add the scrambled fish mixture and mix it well. Allow to cook for another 5 to 10 minutes in medium flame till the masala blends with the fish. Serve this uh, hot. Uh, once you switch off the flame, you can serve it hot with fresh rice and fish curry or rasam etc for a yummy meal so in today's module we have learned very valuable tips on how to choose and select fish from the market so many features i had listed at least six to seven of that or even five of the features you can use on a regular basis to check the freshness of fish so that you will not be cheated for your money and you can buy fresh fish make very tasty and nutritious dishes and we've also seen a variety of dishes which you can employ so that you can have a variety in your diet and not the same curry or the fried fish for everyday diet but other easy to cook and uh, tasty recipes like baked fish grilled fish and fish salads now you can use your imagination and apply the fish to even various other dishes depending on the time you have and the various ingredients you have in your house. Thank you.